Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may, may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day in The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase Longevity products, head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can uh, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites as well, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you prefer, you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. For more information. And I also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. We have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour. Jessica Dubois is going to talk to us about eating disorders. Uh, Jessica is, an, I guess you'd say, a, an eating disorder specialist. She's got a, a, a degree... Uh, well, I guess she, she says she combines the fields of dynamic eating psychology is what she calls it. I'm not sure what her degree is in, but anyway, she's going to talk to us about uh, coaching for eating disorder patients and clinical nutrition and body-centered practices for helping uh, control appetite and a few other interesting things. Uh, she uh, actually went to school at the Chicago School of Massage Therapy as I look through her bio here. Um, and a lot of her work comes from a guy named Mark David. Mark David has written a lot about uh, about how to lose weight in a healthy way. One, is, one of his really cool books is called The Slow Down Diet. I read that a long time ago. Uh, and it's subtitled Eating for Pleasure, Energy, and Weight Loss. And he talks to you about how, he talks in the book about how eating much slower will allow you to be satisfied much more quickly. Food manufacturers or fast food purveyors know this. And they'll actually put food softeners in their foods. And food softeners or uh, softening chemicals, phosphates, which absorb water, uh, make chicken really soft and meat really soft and bread really soft. And they actually call it throat slip. That's what food processors will call it. And they know that the more food slip a food has, the more, people, the more food people will eat. And slowing down eating is actually a very powerful weight loss and appetite suppression tool. You get more... You get fuller faster when you eat slowly. That's a, that's a book is called the, the Slow Down Diet. If you're interested in reading that, Mark David, M-A-R-C, M-A-R-C, D-A-V-I-D, Mark David. And we'll talk to Jessica DeBoer about her strategies. At the bottom of the hour, we'll get your calls in our next segment, 844-236-6010 is our number. All right, so we've been talking about stress, the stress response. Um, it's, I find the stress response to be really, really fascinating and misunderstood. We get better when we're stressed out in, a, in the appropriate context. That's the key, the appropriate context. Just stress by itself is not a good thing. But stress in the appropriate context is how the body grows. It's how cells grow. It's how we get better. Everything gets better when it's uh, under a, st uh, a certain amount of stress in the right context. The context is nutrition. Yesterday, I left off talking about uh, this whole idea of protons and electrons. And I didn't want to get too in the weeds, but it's kind of interesting, actually, especially in the world of skin care. Protons are little pieces of acid. You can think of them that way. When you hear about 
uh, acid diets or acid foods, foods that make your, have an acid response. Cancer loves acid. Acid is stress. And you, you hear that a lot. And alkaline is calming and al alkaline is relaxing. What we're really talking about is protons. Acid uh, being a, a condition where there's a lot of positive charges. These positive charges, the little pieces of acid, are actually a good thing. These little pieces of acid, in the right context, stimulate growth. That's why if you want to have big, strong muscles and you're lifting weights, you want to feel the burn. That burn is acid, lactic acid. Acid tells the cells they got to grow. Acid is like a switch. It tells the cells they got to start, they got to start, uh, they got to uh, pick, up their, pick up their pace, so to speak. They've got to move faster. They got to take care of business faster. The stress response and acid are all stimulus for growth. However, you got to have the raw materials for the growth to occur. This is where stress gets a bad rap. If you stress without the right raw materials, without the right context, if you have protons without the right context, if you have acid without the right context, that's not a good thing. That's where it gets a bad rap. Acid by itself is a problem, but acid or protons, which are little pieces of acid, followed by antioxidants, i.e. electrons, that's a great thing. When you uh, can deliver protons and then follow it up with electrons, that's like going to the gym and coming home and doing your nutrition. That's basically what you're talking about. Nutrition is electrons. That's, what, that's how all micronutrients and macronutrients work, with electrons. And I, again, I don't want to get into in the weeds, but a vitamin is a vitamin because it facilitates the flow of electrons. Minerals carry uh, electrons. And uh, proteins and, and fats and sugars are ways that we derive electrons. We derive electrons from good food. And we, uh, nutrients help the body, help, help those electrons flow. That's the relationship, by the way, between macronutrition and micronutrition. Macronutrition provides the electrons. Micronutrition improves their, their flow. So acid on itself, by itself, is a problem. But acid followed by electrons is not. Acid by, followed by electrons is lightning. Yes, lightning, literally. That's what lightning is. Lightning in the sky is the interaction of, of acid, or protons, I should say, and electrons. When a proton hits an electron, you get lightning. When that happens in a cell, you get lightning in the cell. Metaphorically, maybe even literally. I'm sure light is released on some level. And that lightning is what activates the cell to do things. You're turning it on with the acid, but you've got to have the electrons to get the lightning. If you just have the acid without the electrons, that cell is going to burn out. That's what you don't want. You don't want to stress the system when it can't handle the stress. You do want to stress the system when it can handle the stress. And stress means just a little bit more than it can handle. Just a little bit more. You go to where, it can, where the system can handle it, and then you push it just a little bit more. That's the way you leverage stress, and you do it in the context of energy and nutrition. This is really important in skin, for you guys who are interested in having beautiful skin. Really important because you can take advantage of this phenomena, this, this stress leading to good things phenomena on the skin if you know what you're doing. You can use protons, acid, on the skin. That's why lactic acid and glycolic acid and malic acid and salicylic acid are really good for the skin in the right context. There's actually estheticians and skincare professionals out there who tell you not to do this to your skin because they don't know about in the right context. They don't realize that in the right context, that's actually how the skin grows. That's how you get more connective tissue. That's how you get more moisture factors. That's how you get a thicker and stronger and more robust barrier. By stimulating in the right context. Best stimulators are going to be your acids, and you really want to make sure you're using acids on a regular basis. And by acids, I mean alpha hydroxy acids and perhaps beta hydroxy acids. We've talked about those a lot on this program. And then, uh, and then also topical vitamins, especially topical vitamin C, which is one of the best antioxidant electron carriers. That's how vitamin C works. That's why vitamin C is so good for so many different things. It's because it's so wonderful at carrying electronic energy, electrons specifically. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, and we have lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls in our next segment if we have calls. And Jessica Dubora coming up at the bottom of the hour. 
we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We got Jessica Dubor coming up at the bottom of the hour to talk about eating disorders and things you can do about it and weight loss strategies as well. And then I will get your calls this segment. If you have questions or comments or success stories you, you would like to share, 866-735-2470 is our phone number. If you want to purchase Longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you're in the Longmont area, I'll be doing a talk from my, my good friend Tom Chenault at the Journey Church. If you're in the Longmont area, love to see you. That's this, excuse me, that's this Saturday. Uh, we've got August, what is it, this Saturday, August the 17th, 2019, August the 17th, 2019, 10 a.m. at the Journey Church. Uh, we'll be doing a talk, uh, I'll, I'll be doing a talk, and a few other folks will be doing talks, and these Super Saturdays are very entertaining and very educational, and they really demonstrate, if you are new to longevity and you want to just come by, drop by, they'll show you that this is a, longevity business is just an awesome business for people who want to better themselves, not just in the world of nutrition, not just in terms of nutrition, and not just in terms of finances, but just in terms of being a better human being. There's all kinds of skills that you learn at these Super Saturdays, and uh, if you're in the Longmont area, I will be doing a little bit of a talk here toward, at the end of the at the end of the afternoon. It goes from uh, 10 to 1 um, this Saturday at the Journey Church in Longmont, Colorado, and you can uh, shoot me an email if you have questions, ben at ksco.com. All right, so we're talking about, uh, hang tight if you're on hold, we'll get you in just a moment. Um, we're talking about this idea of stress and the benefits of stress, why stress is not something to be avoided. I hear from skincare professionals all the time that they, I, I hear from patients that their skincare professionals tell them, oh, you should stay out of the sun and you shouldn't be using alpha hydroxy acids and you shouldn't be using retinol. And, and these well meaning, these are well meaning skincare professionals and, and medical professionals, they've fallen victim to the superficial, to the simplistic idea about the body and the skin that says, oh, if you put some stressor on the skin, that's somehow going to put up, it's going to put a burden on the skin that the skin can't handle. No, that's like saying I'm not, not going to go to the gym. That's like saying, you know, you shouldn't go to the gym and lift weights because that's going to put stress on your muscles. Don't ride on that exercise bike. That's going to put stress on your hamstrings. You know, don't, don't put any, don't do yoga, don't do Pilates. That's just going to put stress on your muscle system. Not to, it's not, nobody would think that. There's a misconception we have about stress. We hear that word all the time. So let's be clear. Stress is your friend if it's in the right context. If it's in the context of nutrition in terms of physical stress, and if it's in the term in terms of psychological stress, if you have the appropriate coping mechanisms to handle the stress, you can actually grow from stress. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You can use stress to your advantage. That being said, if stress is burdensome and you're not uh, yeah, mitigating it or fueling it, then you can run into a problem. And that's where we come to estrogen, which is what we've been talking about. Estrogen is a major stress hormone, stress management hormone. It's, it's, like, uh, it, it's basically cholesterol with a little tweak on it, a few modifications. It's, es it's cholesterol that's been tweaked. That's what estrogen is. And guess what? Like estrogen is a stress management substance, so is cholesterol. Cholesterol is a stress management substance. It helps the body handle stresses. To lower your cholesterol artificially, pharmacologically, is just nonsense. It's crazy. It's biochemical ignorance of the highest degree. To artificially lower your cholesterol with a prescription drug. Cholesterol is vital, 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 vital substance uh, of a biochemical, maybe the most vital bio biochemical in the body. Now you will get cholesterol from food, so you, if you take a statin drug, there's still, there's still cholesterol, uh, your blood cholesterol will go out with food because cholesterol is really important. So the body can get cholesterol from food or it can make it, and most of the cholesterol in the blood, by the way, is made, it's not in food. Eggs are a good source of cholesterol, everybody knows that. Organ meats are a good source of cholesterol. Dairy is going to have some cholesterol in it. Cholesterol is not found in vegetarian foods. It's not a vegetable molecule, although vegetables, plants make something called phytocholesterol or phytosterol, they'll call it. And that's similar. And it turns out that these phytosterols can soften the blow of elevated cholesterol. And that's why a lot of uh, alternative practitioners will recommend phytosterols to people who are trying to lower their cholesterol. 
the phytosterols trick the body into lowering some cholesterol. When you eat cholesterol, your body stops making cholesterol. Cholesterol is controlled in that way. So the more cholesterol you eat, the less your body makes. So the thinking is by ingesting phytosterols, uh, from soy especially, but from legumes in general, by, by uh, ingesting phytosterols, your body will downregulate its own production of cholesterol. That's the, that's the theory. And whether it's true or not, it's up for debate. But there is some literature that says that these phytosterols from plants, um, legumes mostly, uh, can have an anti-cholesterol or cholesterol a lowering effect by tricking the body into making less. So, I mean, if you really wanted to lower your cholesterol, that's one strategy. But remember, cholesterol is a stress substance, so stress management substance, and sugar is a major stressor. Uh, uh, cholesterol is a building substance, and sugar is involved in the building process. So the best way to lower your cholesterol is reduce your blood sugar, by far. That's the best way to do it. Reduce your blood sugar, and everybody who studies the cholesterol, uh, everybody who studies cholesterol and the relationship between cholesterol and cardiovascular disease know that cholesterol and blood sugar, elevated cholesterol and blood sugar go hand in hand. All right, 844 is our number. Let's go to Japan and say hello and good morning to our friend Ria. What's up, Ria? Hi, Pat, Mr. Spence. Sorry to be Hi. calling you so many times in a row. No, no problem. What's going on? I'm glad I can help you. I hope I can help you. I have a, que I have a question about my mom. Yes. Um, I had told you that she's had ulcerative colitis uh, surgery like 30 years ago, and she doesn't have her large intestine. It's all cut out. Okay. Yeah. And my question is, recently she's having pains in her arms, and out of nowhere they're like pains in her arms, and then those like nerve pain, like, like nerve numb. yeah. numbing. Yeah. And yeah, that's called neuropathy. In her, she has numbness in her ring finger and her pinky yeah. finger on that's her left hand. That's called neuropathy. Have you heard that term, neuropathy? Not really. Okay, neuropathy is neuro, means nerves. Pathy means mm -hmm. pathology. It's a, it's a neuro, mm -hmm. neural problem that typically happens to people who have blood sugar. It, it's linked to blood sugar problems, and it's linked to okay. age. It happens as we get older, and it happens when people have blood sugar problems. Now, without an intestine, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that's going to be going wrong mm -hmm. with her metabolism mm -hmm. and her biochemistry. So I don't know yeah. definitively what her blood sugar situation is, but that's a sign. Mm -hmm. That there is a blood sugar problem, uh, the colon, the the large intestine, I should say, is not. It's not uh, doesn't play a major role in absorption of foods and nutrients. Some a little mm -hmm. bit, but basically it's a, a waste ex extract system. So yeah. you know, she, she's going to have a problem cleaning herself out, basically, and that mm -hmm. can lead to yeah. all kinds of metabolic issues, including blood sugar problems. So I would be working on the blood what sugar is the best. Say again. Like, what can I do to help her stay away Beyond from tangy tangerine. Like, Beyond tangy tangerine. Mm -hmm. That's what you use for that. Uh, the B-complex and electrolytes. Vegetable juices. Essential fats wouldn't hurt her. Okay. But I would be going thinking electrolytes, mm -hmm. B vitamins. It's an electrical conductivity okay. issue and keep her sugar down. That, you want to focus on the electricity okay. of the body. All right, Rhea. Got to take a okay. commercial break. Okay. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got Jessica Dubar. Coming up at the bottom of the hour in our next segment, we'll talk about vibrant uh, life breakthroughs with Jessica DeBora, appetite suppression and weight loss. Uh, don't go away. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can purchase Longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Shopping site. We've got digestive enzymes and power powders and various devices, EMF devices, uh, probiotics, herbal extracts at truthnourishment.com truthnourishment.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am very excited to do our next guest, to have our next guest on. Jessica DeBoer is an eating psychology coach, and uh, she specializes in eating disorders. I talked to Jessica a couple weeks ago. She uses our True Skin Health products, and, and just got to chatting, and I was like, well, sounds like something my Bright Side listeners might be interested in hearing about. Um, everybody wants to lose weight. Appetite, uh, appetite suppression is a big thing, and food choices, and are so hard to make, it's so hard to know what the heck to eat. Uh, so any, uh, any information that we can glean from 
professionals in the eating business, eating psychology professionals, is going to be in all of our health interests. So I am very excited to have our next guest on, Jessica DeBoer. Hello, Jessica. Hello, aloha. Aloha. <laughs> so you're in Maui. What's I it like am in Maui? Maui yeah. What's so it like in aloha Maui these days? Come... It's still hot. Well, you know, I mean... right now it's like full moon here. I mean, it's still dark, so it's it's quite eerie when I look out there. I just see this bright moonlight. Oh, it's still, down. it's still early in the morning. But, I, you know, I was there about a month ago, and it was brutal, brutal, brutal. I had no idea how, how, how hot and muggy it could be. Well, you know, I live 4,000 feet, so oh, I don't mountains. have that same mugginess. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, all right. Well, it was beautiful, <laughs> have, I will say that. We have the perfect 70-degree weather year-round. <laughs> Lucky you. And it is, it is very visually stunning, Maui is. Quite beautiful. So you're an eating psychology coach. What the heck does that mean? Ah, that is such a good question. Well, you know, one thing that we all do, unless, unless we're breastarians, is we eat. So I get to work with people on not just what food we take in, but also all the emotional component around food, because mm. it's our first form of nourishment when we you know, come out of the womb is, you know, give me the milk and give me the comfort. So we end up developing a lot of potential issues around food. And I think we all know well what it's like to have cravings and, you know, to sometimes go towards food as a comfort when maybe there are other things that we can do as well. Do you think, in your opinion, do you think it is inevitable that we are going to have health problems if we eat for emotional reasons? Or can you eat for emotional reasons and still, in your opinion, and still be a healthy? Or is it, there, are they mutual, is good health and eating for emotions mutually exclusive? I think they're completely connected, and I think if we're eating to try to um, to support us in some emotional component, it can be detrimental. It depends if we're eating because for pleasure and we're making good food choices, I think that can support us in health. But if we're using it because we're not getting something else in our life and we're going for something maybe even sweet or something that may not be supporting us health-wise, that can lead us down the wrong track. Okay, so talk to us. You mentioned sweet, and when I think of that, and I think of the combination of, of, of sweet plus eating for emotions and eating for pleasure, uh, and I think of cravings. So what, tell me how you deal with those. What, what, from an eating psychology per perspective, what are cravings, and how do, you, how do you deal with them therapeutically? Sure. Okay. So let's just say I had a really bad day, and instead of maybe – finding something that's going to help support me in relaxing my system because I'm feeling stressed out. I go straight to the kitchen and I look for something that's going to make me feel better. And that might be for a lot of us some kind of sweet. It could be cookies. It could be ice cream. It can be some comfort food that maybe we're eating it because we want to stuff our emotions down because that can be very common. It's just like, I don't want to think about those things and I'm just going to eat and that will just you know, block those emotions from coming up. But what if we were able to work through to say, okay, I feel a little stressed out. I'm going to do some other, you know, breathing techniques, other things that will make me happy. And then when I go to the kitchen, I'm going to be able to check in and what does my body actually want versus what's going to, mm. you know, be a Band-Aid for my emotional state right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And I know I lost a whole bunch of weight a few years ago. I was 50 pounds and it took me about a year to lose it. And uh, I did it by doing just that. I would like check in with my belly. And I noticed that there's two mm. kinds of eating. There's belly eating and there's brain eating. Brain eating. And b belly eating is not very frequent. And it doesn't take much to satisfy belly eating. But brain eating, you're never sat. Isn't that, is that true? I mean, it's like, it's, it's like an... Yeah, because we're always, if we've got a lot of emotional stuff going on that we aren't actually dealing with, we can only push it down so far. It's always going to be there, which means that we're going to always be going for things that aren't supporting us. And like you said, you're never going to feel satisfied. And I really, you know, I find that that can be the emotional, and you know this well with taking the longevity products, is that when we're not also feeding ourselves goodness in vitamins and minerals and such like that, then we might actually have a physiologic response in going, going for more food and could be craving things that aren't so supportive of our system. Personally, for years, 
I was having a hard time feeling satisfied. I would eat a very good, healthy meal, and then I would end up going for seconds and thirds because I wasn't feeling satisfied. And what I later realized was that I was deficient in my minerals and vitamins. And when I started supporting on that level, so there's, you know, different aspects to look at. But when I started doing that, all of a sudden my portion size started to mm. get smaller. How so I was take? really fascinated by both elements of that. How long did it take from the time you started uh, using longevity products to the time you started to notice that you had you were feeling satisfied quicker or you had changes in your appetite? And I assume you lost weight too. Yeah, you know, my digestive issues started going, the bloating, gas, all those things I started. And there was a relief too because I, I felt like what is going on with me that I cannot feel satisfied after a meal. But probably within a month. I felt the difference. I was starting to see the difference, and I didn't even make the connection initially because I was so used mm. to, you know, trying to take different supplements. But it wasn't until a really good mineral vitamin, specifically in that arena, that made such a difference. And also for mood, uh, I don't. I don't think people realize how much, um, you know, just even anxiety or depression or emotional stuff can be so affected if we're not getting the nutrients. Um, I actually have a, a quick funny story on that. I thought I would take a quick little break when I went on my honeymoon because I thought, well, I don't want to carry it around, and, you know, maybe it's good to take a break. And so within the first 10 days, my husband said, seems like you're just in a bad mood every day. <laughs> and then he gave me his supplements, and after that day, I was not in a bad mood again. <laughs> uh, what did he give you? Well, he gave me his, his mineral and vitamin and omega. Okay, now, it wasn't Yongevity, So, though. you know, basically equivalent of the Healthy Start Pack. A healthy Start Pack, gotcha. And you're selling Yongevity, or do you have a business in Maui? You know, I, I am a distributor, and I definitely do, you know, give that to my clients and stuff like that. I haven't um, actively been selling, but I, I recommend it to everyone. I, love I want it. you to walk us through what it's like to be a eating psychology coach when somebody comes into your into your practice and how you handle that. and what that's about because I imagine a lot of our listeners might be curious about eating psychology coaches and where you find an eating psychology coach. We're talking to Jessica Dubois about eating psychology. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll take a commercial break and come back right after this. Don't We're back on the bright side. We're talking to Jessica Dubois, eating psychology coach. And I want to run through, Jessica, what exactly what exactly an eating psychology therapy session is about. But before we even get into that, what do you, what do you mean by eating psychology? Great idea. Uh, great question. So eating psychology is really looking at all aspects. It's not just about eating, but it's all the emotional components that make us um, how we take in food. But we realize that it's, it's about food, but it's not about food. Because if you're coming to the table and you've got other things going on, you're in a stress state, you're going to take in that food very differently than mm. if you're in a table with good friends and you're having a good time and you've got a lot, a lot of spaciousness to enjoy that meal. So it's eating psychology. We look at emotions, experiences, belief systems, everything that is around ourselves and the food that we're taking in. So in other words, you look at the psychology, the whole person, not just eating psychology, but psychology in general, correct? I guess you could say that. I mean, I personally come from a psychology background, and I find people so fascinating. We are such unique beings. And so this is why, and I have a passion for eating. So that's why the two of these are so beautifully tied in together because, yes, it is about the person and about what they're bringing to the table when they are consuming food. Are you also a chef by any chance? I'm not a chef, but I will say that I really enjoy making healthy chocolates and sweets because they're so hard to find. So people keep telling me to sell them. So that's as, that's as far for, as I get to a chef. <laughs> what do you use for sweetener? Um, you know, it's it's interesting. I do I use a monk fruit sweetener, and I am looking into other really good ones. As I was using one that had erythritol, which now I am questioning if that's a good idea. But do you like the monk fruit extract? I, I've kind of been playing around with that myself. It's not overly sweet if you're used to sugar. You know, yeah, I was using a lot like the 
just a combination of monkfruit and erythritol, and I've been doing a little more research with that, and now I'm wondering if I should. I never really played around with stevia, but I know a lot of people really like it, so I'm. It's not quite, like yeah, stevia has its own mm. characteristic sort of taste because it's not really sugar. It activates sweet receptors, so it doesn't have quite the same, quite the same sweetness flavor or sweetness type as sugar does. But it can be definitely be a, a nice substitute if you just want to get by. Uh, and obviously, sugar is a big problem. So somebody comes in, somebody comes in. Yeah. What they call you up? What do they do? Come to your office? How's that work? Sure. Well, the beauty of this work is that you can do it in person, but you can do it anywhere because of the beauty of being online. So I'll do, sometimes I'll do it either as a video call or I'll do it as a phone call. Or if somebody is local, they also can come into my office space too. So it, it really gives flexibility with whatever works for the person's location and schedule. And typically what, and would, their, what would their complaints be? What would they be wanting help with? Great. You know, obviously a very common one is weight loss, and but it also can be digestion. Um, there, People can also come in because they just feel like their energy is low, is lacking, or they have low self-esteem with body image. So there is a variety of different issues that it can be even, you know, other health conditions that are going on for them. I mean, even people with are wondering, like, oh, how do I eat well? You know, maybe my doctor says I'm pre-diabetic or I'm on the road to heart disease. Mm. So a whole variety of issues can happen because we're not treating ourselves well when it comes to nutrition, but it can be other elements. And so when somebody comes in, they're gonna, they might actually think, oh, we're just going to talk about food this entire time. And I actually don't even start with the food component. I start with what's going on in their life because if they're not happy in their job or in the relationship, or maybe they're just, they're wanting to be doing something else in their life and they're not doing it, it's going to impact their health and it's going to it's going to often the gateway problem could be around the food. So, you know, we were talking earlier, if they're not happy with something and they might go towards the food to give them the happiness, then that might create some issues. So, but let's say they realize, okay, and through the, through our, our sessions, we're going to start to unravel that. And it'll be like, actually, yeah, I feel like I could be doing something better. So my passion to follow this, I've been in this job for 10 mm. years, is no longer giving me that satisfaction. And when they start to find that love and passion, you know, for maybe making a, a shift, if that's what they end up deciding to doing, or maybe it's just unpacking a little bit more and finding the joy in what they're, and I use a job as an example, but it can be anything. Um, it's just an easy one to tune into. Then what can happen is that not only do we start making shifts around the food and how they're eating the food, that's something I haven't talked about, but it's fascinating. Then what happens is some of those issues, whether it's digestion, energy, weight loss um, that, they, that they're looking for, those can start to really make dramatic shifts. Even in a couple of weeks, I start to see that change happening. So you I, you started to talk start to mention about how how you eat, and I think you're referring to the the pace of uh, the slowdown kind of thing. And I, I noticed that uh, you read the book The Slowdown Diet, um, which I read a long time ago. And it's great a great book. Mark David does great stuff around eating and uh, eating action. Tell us what tell us what the whole relationship between the speed and the pace of your eating and uh, satisfaction, appetite suppression, weight loss, how they link together. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. So, so many of us are, we live in such a fast paced world and that ends up affecting how we eat. Um, I know that I'm guilty of trying to, you know, put something down my gut between sessions and not giving myself the time as so many of us do is like, oh, let's make a nice meal. Let's sit down, enjoy it. And what happens is we're trying to eat very quickly. And what we don't realize is not just about what we're putting into our system, but it's about how we're doing it. And if we're eating it quickly, so many of us can be fast eaters, then the body doesn't actually recognize that it's getting all this good nutrition in itself. And it, it's not, it can affect how much you actually absorb in your system. And your body, it actually thinks it's stress. Even if you don't feel stressed, but you're eating quickly mm, the speed. or you're eating on the go, 
yeah. right? You're eating a car or you're yeah. watching, you know, the latest Netflix uh, show and you're, you're eating at the same time and you might be enjoying that show, but your body will interpret that because it's not focused or it's eating quickly mm. as a stress response. And then that means that a whole slew of fun things, but basically you're not getting all that yummy blood flow down there. It's going to your extremities, to your head, and you are impairing your ability to actually absorb all that nutrition from the food. Plus running risks for ulcerative colitis and irritable bowel syndrome and heartburn and all kinds of digestive problems too, I bet. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, people are always complaining about why is it that I have such this, you know, this tire around my midriff. And Mm. that can just come from not only not being able to digest well and the bloating happens, but also your cortisol level, you know, Mm. which is kind of the stress is going to get increased when the body thinks it, Mm -hmm. um, you know, when when you're eating fast, the body thinks, oh, you're running from a tiger, you're in a stress state. And so you actually will pack on extra fat all around your organs, creating that very unsavory look that so many of us are trying Mm. to you know, eliminate you know exactly what you're talking about. So we have about a minute. Give us a, a strategy for some, just somebody being able to kind of slow down and, and take, get the most bang for their calorie buck. Absolutely. So the best thing you can do is that when you sit down to eat, try to be present with your food, close your eyes, put your hands on your belly, take a couple of really nice, beautiful, deep breaths, really feel that abdominal breath because we tend to do a lot of upper breath, upper chest breathing. And if you can take those full deep breaths and really get yourself in that nice zone before you eat, and then when you are eating, really be present with your food and have as much pleasure as you can. Enjoy those flavors. Look at the beautiful visuals. Just take all that in and have that presence. Your body is actually going to feel much more satiated. You're going to absorb and digest that food better, and you're going to feel better in your system. And you probably will not need to eat as much because your body will get the signals, oh, I'm eating and now I'm full. Yeah, that sounds like a great strategy for life. Just slow down, take in the colors, enjoy the sensations. Yes. Isn't that? Isn't that well, it's like is, a metaphor for life? Food, That's awesome. Exactly. Oh, food is, yeah, food is the way we handle food is the way we handle life. So we can handle food well, well we can handle life well, and, and vice versa. Now, how do people it. get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you and get want some more information? Great question. So my my website is www.jessicadebor. That's D E B O E R B as in boy at uh, jessicadeborhealth.com. Jessicadeborhealth.com. Awesome. Yes. And and uh, if anybody wants uh, to send me an email, Ben at KSEO.com, I can get that to you as well. Thanks, Jessica. Have a beautiful day. It's great to talk to you. That was Jessica DeBoer, Thank you eating so psychology. Much. Thank you. Eating psychology coach. I'm pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.